Hey everyone, Dan here, and welcome back to a, another uh, Becoming a Writer segment. We're going to do part three here, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, what to do once you've decided what kind of writer you're going to be, and you've come up with your idea. So basically we're going to talk about outlining. Now, I'm going to focus on novels right now. Now, um, there are many different types of writing. Um, poetry, of course, there's short stories, long form prose, novels, novellas, there's comic books, there's screenplays. I mean, there's as many different mediums within the medium that as you could imagine. Um, but the reason I'm going to focus on novels is, uh, for one thing, it's one of the things that I've been focused on a lot lately with the, uh, the advent of Dynamite Books. Um, the, the company I'm working for right now. And the other thing is that I think it's the most freeing thing. Um, the, the, the outlining for comics and screenplays is very different and it's more solid structured because you're looking at a specific length. You have a certain field to play in. With a novel, you're on your own in the sense that you don't have page count. You don't have a minute count. You have maybe a word count if you're looking for it. But no one's, it's not a hard and fast thing. Uh, it's usually a minimum goal to hit, not a maximum. In a comic, you get 20 pages, 22 pages, 24 pages. Depends on what company you're working for. In a screenplay, they're looking for 90 minutes, maybe two hours. Very rarely do you get to go over two hours unless you're Chris Nolan or you've got uh, Kevin Costner behind this. So we're going to discuss those separately. Let's focus tonight on novels. Now, for me, the biggest thing is with a novel is not to be too structured. Now, which is going to sound crazy since I do a lot of mystery writing. And the reason is that um, I'm, I am a believer in characters and I'm a believer in letting the characters drive the story. So more so than the, than the plot. Now, I will get to the point where I have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the middle is fake even. I just need, really need a beginning and an end. And the reason you need that is basically it's like laying, in, writing a novel is like laying out a, bro, a trip on a map. You know, I'm going to go from L.A. to Dallas. Great. Well, just because you pick I-10 to get the whole way there doesn't mean that ends up being the best route. So you start off heading out on I-10. That's where you're going to go. But suddenly you find out, hey, the world's largest bell of twine is just up the road over here. So we're going to shoot over there. And then once you get there, you find out this great restaurant is just a few miles past. And over there, you can pick up the, the you know, the... 32, and that'll take you out to the 27, that'll take you back down to the 10 before you get to Dallas. You'll be fine. Well, that's what writing is like when it comes to novels, at least in my experience. If I have a beginning and I have an ending, then I sit down and I break it into three parts. Now, a lot of times I'll be writing with a word count in mind. Like I'll think, when I'm doing a dynamite book, it's 50,000 words. That's, that's our goal because we're cranking out these things. We want them to be short. I want to be able to write them in about 20 days of actual writing time. So I break it down into 20 scripts. I break it down, or 20 chapters, and I break those into three parts. And what I do is I will outline, I'll outline the basic story when I'm working with an editor. But if I'm doing it on my own, like if I'm doing a Lucius Fogg novel, no, never. What I do is I just have my beginning and end. So let's look at it from a Lucius Fogg novel or you're doing your own thing. You're not working specifically with an editor who is guiding the story. You're, it's your story and you're going to sell it afterwards. So what you do is you get your beginning and your end and you sit down and you go, okay, I'm going to write a 75,000 word novel. That's a good size novel. That's sellable. Anything over that is gravy. So then you're going to take it and break it down into three parts. You're going to go, okay... I'm going to look at the, I'm going to try to write decent sized chapters. I like to write 2,500 word chapters. And again, that's ballpark. It doesn't have to be, they can be short, they can be long. I just worked with a, a writer named Scott Wilson who did tiny chapters and huge chapters. 
I like mine a little more uniformed, but then that's just me, to each its own. But the bottom line is you take the first third of the book and you plot that out. And the reason you do that is then you you write the you do the first third and you work towards the big moment. There's always those those changes, you know. Basically the first third of the book is you build up to an action beat, you're building up to a twist, something that's gonna change the direction, and then second act is that change in direction, and the third act is the is the start of the drive to the final. So you start off in the first act and you break that down and you write out basically a couple sentences per chapter that you want to do. And you break that down. So say you're doing, let's say 30 chapters, 10 chapters each to 2,500 words. So you're getting your 25,000 words for the first part. Yeah. So you break down your 10 chapters over with a paragraph in each one, giving you a basic idea what each one's going to be. Then you sit down, you start writing. You write the first chapter, you write the second, you look and you're using your guide. But each time, if your character starts going off to the right or going off to the left or loop to looping around, if it's natural for the character, let him do that. And then just keep going and following what he's going to do or she's going to do, depending on what your character is. And then when you get to the end of the first act, you sit down, you kind of reassess where you're at, you look at where you're trying to get to, you're looking at that end point over there, and you're like, okay, this is the way. So now you started here, you're trying to get here, but somewhere along the way you got over here. Well, that's fine. You went over here, now you've got to go back over here. So you start plot the next act with going back towards that. Now, again, whether you go straight or you end up curving off again doesn't matter as long as it's natural to the story the story is flowing but you've got your second act plotted out you know that the, the beats you want to do and you got your 10 chapters whatever it is and you flow and once you get to the end of the second act and you do your big twist again everything is falling apart the hero is going to die whatever then you switch back and you write towards your ending and you plot out your last three towards that ending. Now that's the key there, is that that's when you get a little stricter and that's where you drive everything towards the ending. Now, there's a chance that you're not gonna be able to get to that ending. There's a chance that the natural flow of the story changes the ending. I've had it happen in the first Lucius Fogg book. Um, as I was going through the first 10 chapters, I realized it wasn't working because it wasn't personal enough because I had someone else, everything was happening to somebody else. So I ended up killing that character and making everything happen directly to my main, my narrator, Jimmy. And once I did that, the story improved. About the, between the second and third act, I decided to add the Russian Mafia. It was a whim. I really just came up with it one morning as I was about to sit down and write. But when I did, it kind of clicked a bunch of new things into place, and they became a big part of the ending of the story. So what I originally had in mind for the ending became very different, because I had to resolve what happened to Jimmy, and I had the Russian mob to deal with. So the ending I got was not what the ending I had planned, but it had the elements I wanted in it from the original, and it was, a, to me, a better ending. I was much happier and it much it flowed naturally with the story. It's what the characters naturally did. So that's the way I will write a book. Again, I sit down, I know my beginning and I know my end that I want. I break it down into three acts. I write to the end of the first act, then I write to the end of the second act, then I write to the end of the book. So th there's a better breakdown of what the three act structure is and I'm not teaching the three act structure right now. I'm just teaching a basic outlining. You should know the three-act structure. If you guys want me to cover that, I'll go into it. But that's pretty much what I wanted to focus on tonight. It's just the idea of how to outline, yet still leave enough flexibility that your, your story can flow naturally and your characters can go where they need to go. 
again, if if you're forcing your characters in a direction, then you're not really letting them be who they are. And in which case, if you really aren't getting where you want to go, then you might need to reassess the character that you've created. You might need to change that character, or you or you let them go where they're going to go, and you just deal with the outcome. Those are your two options at that point to let the story flow naturally. Sometimes you just let them go where you want to go and see what happens and work with it. But other times you're like, you know, this character isn't who I need in this story. I need a different character. Or in the case of the first Lucius Fogg novel, I need the things that are happening to character B to happen to character A. And that was the big difference. And that's what I think made... The Deadly Creatures book much better, and and so far people seem to agree. So, all right, folks, that's it for tonight on uh, outlining. I will be back. Um, I'll probably cover outlining comics because it's a more structured thing, and I think there's some comic writers in this as well. Uh, comic and screenplays are similar. I may do them together, but novels are very different, or short stories, prose. So that's why I separated them. Uh, I hope you're all being safe. I hope you're having a good evening, and I will be back soon. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, hit subscribe, hit the likes, stuff like that, please. I'd appreciate it, and it helps the channel, trying to grow the channel. So thank you, thank you. Be safe, everyone.